Last year, we saw our lives completely change in terms of how and where we work, the way we interact with our coworkers, where we went to Electric University, and how we complete our work. Everything just shifted to home. So today, I want to share with you how I set up the ideal environment for me to work and study from home. Hey everyone, my name is Manny Rattal, I'm a third year civil engineering student at McMaster University. I also work in the field full time, and in my spare time, I like making videos like these for YouTube. With work and school shifting to home, it was clear that I needed a setup and something that would keep me productive and motivated, considering that I'd be spending almost, you know, 10 to 14 hours of the day sitting in one spot, either working or going through lectures and studying for my midterms. Now, I wanted this setup to be as financially viable as possible, meaning I wanted the best bang for buck products. Uh, so I didn't end up spending too much money and, uh, you know, really hitting the wallet uh, too hard. So as productive as I want to be, I also want to make sure that uh, everything that I do at this desk also brings me joy and entertainment. So throughout the video, I'll be going over all the components for my desk setup and I'll also have a tally of the dollar amount so you guys sort of get an understanding of how much I spent on this entire setup. Oh, and while you're here, why don't you check me out on the gram at Manny Rital. Um, screenshots right here. This year, I'm really trying to step on my Insta game. I got a new Sony a6400 camera, so maybe that'll help, but who knows. Uh, this year and last year, it's kind of like this, but give me a follow and hopefully it'll be pretty good. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be going over this video in five separate parts, highlighting the five main components of the desk. So we're going to start off with the desk itself, and then we're going to look at the monitor I'm using. Then I'm going to allude to my custom built PC that I made specifically for this scenario. Then we'll look at the peripherals that are attached with my computer. And then finally, what good is a productivity desk set up if you don't mention any Apple products? So here it goes. So my desk unit itself was purchased from Ikea. It was purchased back in 2017 and you can see um, a little bit of it is chipping away, but it's fine. I mean, for the price I paid for and for the amount of time that I've used it, uh, for an IKEA product, it's something that, you know, just comes with the product itself. You're going to expect some wear and tear. Um, the desk itself is supported by two legs on the left-hand side. And on the right side, it's actually supported by a drawer unit. The drawer unit is actually very functional. Uh, I keep all my stationary supplies, all my pens, my papers, as well as my all my electronics just stored away in there for easy convenience. The table itself and the drawer unit together cost me about $130 back in 2017. I'm not sure if this exact table setup is still available at Ikea, but if it is, I would definitely recommend that you guys check it out. The monitor I have for my setup is the AOC 24 inch bezel-less high refresh display monitor. It has a refresh rate of 144 Hertz and a very fast response time of one millisecond. So that means when I'm dragging my mouse around the monitor or dragging a window, I experience absolutely no motion blur at all. It also is very good for gaming if that's something that you're into. The monitor itself is a 1080p monitor. It's not a 4K monitor, but there is a reason for that. A 4K monitor takes approximately four times uh, the pixels. So that means it takes four times the resources from the computer in order to process everything that's occurring on the monitor. So the 1080p monitor is a little more resource, resource efficient and pairing that with the high refresh rate and the fast response time, uh, it was almost a no-brainer uh, no for me to pick up this monitor. Video editing, note-taking, responding to emails on the 24-inch display is excellent for me. The IPS display means that the monitor is very bright with contrasting colors, which makes it a pleasure to look at. The desktop itself is the heart and soul of this whole entire setup. The enclosure or case is made by the company called Fractal Design. The Fractal Design Mesh FIC is a mid-tower case with a clear tempered glass side enclosure, which can easily be removed for quick access inside. The drive bays and power supply are hidden from sight to give it a clean and minimalistic look, which is very pleasing to the eye. The case itself has two audio mics and two USB 3.0 ports for quick access. The case also uh, has a large intake vent on the front uh, with an outflow vent located in the back and on the top of the case, allowing for easy and convenient airflow to keep all the components cool inside. The total cost of this case was about $150 Canadian, and I absolutely recommend it to anybody who's thinking about building their own custom-built PC. Inside the case, I have all the components connected together with the Asus Tough B550 Plus motherboard. 
It is a full ATX form factor motherboard which supports the newest AMD Gen 4 CPUs and RAM at the time the video was created. Oh, and it also supports RGB, which is super cool. This motherboard was purchased for approximately $250 and it should be good for at least three to four years, uh, considering that AMD doesn't necessarily upgrade their CPUs as frequently as Intel does. The CPU in my custom build is a Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core CPU. It is an 8 core beast of a CPU reaching up the speeds of 4.4 GHz, absolutely breezing through any task that you throw at it. Video editing, 4K video playback, and gaming on the CPU is an absolute breeze. The CPU itself is cooled by this Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition CPU cooler. As the name and appearance indicates, the cooler is accompanied by a programmable RGB fan, and once again, I just love the RGB aesthetic. The Ryzen 7 CPU itself cost me around $500 and the CPU cooler was approximately $70 at the time it was purchased back in 2020. To handle all the graphics processing, AutoCAD renders and gaming, I have the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super Video Card installed in the desktop PC. The card itself has 8GB of GDDR5 video RAM, which makes rendering large projects as well as gaming very smooth and enjoyable, especially at 1080p. The video card was purchased during the peak of the cryptocurrency mining back in uh, late 2020, so the prices were fluctuating like crazy, especially when the newer models were released by NVIDIA. I was lucky enough to get it for around $600, but I had to search all the way in New Jersey to find this one particular piece. The PC itself has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and has two SSDs, each of which are 240 gigs, and I have one two terabyte hard drive. The SSDs I use are for uh, my operating system, so boot times are extremely fast, and for programs that I use most often, so that'd be Adobe Premiere Pro, Pro or um, uh, AutoCAD. And um, most of my games, as well as my videos, are stored on the hard drive, so something that I don't really need the fastest speed to access. Now with the case, it makes them very convenient. They're hidden uh, at the back of the enclosure, so you can't see any cables uh, when the PC is running. So that's another reason why I prefer this case in particular. The RAM and SSDs cost me approximately $120 and $107 respectively. Last but not least, the power supply giving all the components their energy is the Seasonic Focus GX650 fully modular power supply. The modular characteristic of the power supply means that only the cables that are required need to be attached to the power supply. So you don't get a clutter of cables and a mess all inside your PC. The power supply is also 80 plus gold rated. That means that under any load uh, scenario, it will maintain at least an 80% efficiency. Efficiency means that the power in is what's being used as power out. You want to be as efficient as possible. That way you can reduce your electricity costs. The power supply cost me approximately $135 and it was ordered online through Newegg. For the sake of consistency and productivity, I have an RGB Logitech wired mouse. While not desired, the wired mouse adds a level of precision to my work, especially during tasks regarding video editing as well as computer-aided designs such as AutoCAD. The mouse is very responsive and the buttons and scroll wheel are extremely satisfying to use. The keyboard I'm using is a wireless keyboard that I bought off Amazon. It's an Amazon Choice Artec Stainless Steel wireless keyboard. I've had this keyboard for a month and I've only had to charge it once. Typing is very satisfying and it almost reminds me of my MacBook Pro. The Logitech mouse cost me approximately $45, where the keyboard ran me about $50. Bucks. I'm using the Fifine unidirectional microphone as my main mic for both work meetings and lectures over Zoom. It's a great mic and it's powered by a single USB cable. The microphone was purchased for about $50 off Amazon and the prices usually fluctuate so keep an eye on it but I recommend it, it's a great mic. And of course, as I mentioned in the intro, no productivity desk is complete without an iPad. Paired with a pencil, I use this to take all my notes both during lecture and work meetings. I've saved so much paper and clutter by switching to electronic note taking. I've also reduced the number of stationary supplies I need because most apps have everything you could possibly want. I use GoodNotes as my main note taking app for both school and work, and I absolutely love it for its filing format. So in total, the combined value of this desk setup is approximately $3,200. This desk setup was built over a span of multiple months. So taking what you will from this video, I would advise you that you only purchase the stuff that really uh, benefits you and buy only the things that are optimal for your workflow. So you probably won't end up spending as much as I did. 
maybe you will, maybe you won't, but it all completely depends on what your workflow is. Thank you for watching the video. That was my desk setup. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everyone.